Let's do an example concerning internal loadings in a beam. Okay, so in this problem, we're looking for the normal force, shear force, and bending moment just to the left of this six kilonewton force and just to the right. So point B is just to the left and point C is just to the right. And we have a moment here and we also have this six kilonewton force. So the first step is to find the support reactions. So we need to find the re support reactions at point A and point D. So point A is a rocker, so it just has a vertical force. And at point D, it's a pin joint, a fixed pin joint. So we have a uh, vertical force and a horizontal force. Okay, so we use our uh, equations of equilibrium for a rigid body to solve this. So let's start out with the sum of the forces in the x direction. And we know that those should be equal to zero because this beam's in equilibrium. And in the x direction, let's look. So it looks like we only have dx. So right off the bat, we can say dx is equal to zero because there's no other loadings in the x direction. All right, so let's do the sum of the, uh, what? Let's get crazy. Let's do the sum of the moments around point A and set those equal to zero. Okay, sum of the moments around A. We have uh, the six kilonewton force, which is acting three uh, meters away and we're calling counterclockwise positive, remember? So that will be a positive, uh, no, a negative moment. That's clockwise, a negative moment. So we have six times three, and then we have dy, and dy is going to be counterclockwise, so that's going to be positive. And that is acting three plus six, that's nine meters away. And dx has no moment effect around A. And for these external moments applied, all we do is add them. So this nine kilonewton, uh, kilonewton meter moment here we just add that and that is counterclockwise so that's going to be positive so we have negative 18 here plus 9 that means 9 it looks like dy comes out to be a uh, 1 kilonewton dy is 1 kilonewton and now we can take the sum of the forces in the y direction here sum the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero. And we have AY pointed up. We have the six pointed down. DY is upward. And that's it. So it looks like AY comes out to be five kilonewtons. Make sure that's correct. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so we have our support reactions now. And now we're gonna move on to the second step which is to use the method of sections. We did this in the truss problems. And what we're trying to do is just break this beam and use only one section of it where we're looking to find these, these internal loadings. So we're, let's do point B first here. So we're gonna break it right at point B. And let's draw a free body diagram of that. So we need to draw the free body diagram and we broke this beam right at point B, all right? And we have, on this side, we have AY pointed upward, which we said was five. And point B is just to the left of the six kilonewton force. So we're not going to include it on this, on this diagram, all right? Because we're just using to the left-hand side and, and the six kilonewton force is out to the right. All right, so we must use our sign convention, so uh, N is pointed directly outward from the beam for our no, uh, positive sign convention. Be careful about your shear force. Your shear force, when you use the left-hand side of a beam, the shear force is positive going downward. All right, so the shear force is positive going downward. And lastly, our positive moment sign convention bends towards the top. So this is our positive sign convention for a moment. Okay, so now with this method of sections, all we do is apply the equations of equilibrium. So we have, I guess I should have labeled the normal force there. So let's sum the forces in the x direction first and set those equal to zero. 
In the uh, normal direction, we just have, or in the x direction, we just have n, and no other forces in the normal direction, or in the x direction, I should say. So n is equal to zero. All right, now let's sum the forces in the y direction. Okay, and summing the forces in the y direction, we have five pointed up. We have our shear force, which is labeled V pointed down. And that is it in terms of forces in the y direction. So we set that equal to zero. And we have uh, the shear at B is equal to, I guess I should have labeled these B because we're doing point B here. The shear at point B is five kilonewtons. All right, so these are some of our answers here. So we can circle those. And lastly, we need to do the sum of the moments. Sum of the moments. And we're gonna do the sum of the moments around point B, which is over here. All right, so sum of the moments around B and set those equal to zero. Okay. So we're gonna do counterclockwise is positive. So M there is creating a positive moment because that's counterclockwise. So we have M and then we have uh, this five kilonewton force and I should have labeled how far that is away and that's three meters. So this is three meters. Okay, three meters there. So we have M and this five is a clockwise, so that's going to be negative. So we have five times the moment arm, which is three. And that is it. Neither N or V create a moment around this point, right? Because they go directly right through it. So it looks like we have that equal to zero and the moment at B is equal to 15 kilonewton meters. 15 kilonewton meters. Okay, so that is the internal loadings at B. We have the normal, the shear, and the moment. Okay, let's, uh, let's do part, uh, point C. So point C is to, directly to the right here of the six kilonewton force. Now we're gonna figure out the internal loadings at point C here. So we need to dr draw the free body diagram using the method of sections, breaking it right at C here. Let's make that straight. Okay. All right. So we broke it at C and we have the positive shear at C. We have normal C and then also the moment here of C. And then we have AY, which is still five kilonewtons here. And since C is directly to the right of the, the six kilonewton force, we have the downward force right here of six kilonewtons. Okay. All right, from here we just use our equilibrium equations again. So we'll take the sum of the forces in the X direction and set those equal to zero. And again, we only have NC, the normal force. So NC is zero. We'll take the sum of the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero. We have five going up. We have six going down. And then we also have VC going downward, which is zero. So VC comes out to be five minus six, negative one. I believe that turns out to be negative one kilonewtons. All right, and then lastly, we take the sum of the moments around C and set those equal to zero. So we're taking the moments right about this point. Counterclockwise is our positive sign convention. Okay, so we have MC, which is going to create a positive moment around C. That's counterclockwise. This six kilonewton force, this distance that it's acting away is negligible. So we don't need to account for that in the moments. Uh, VC is not going to create a moment and neither is NC. So we have uh, MC and then we have this five kilonewton force, uh, which is three meters away. 
and that's going to be negative. So we have MC uh, five times three, and that should be it. We set that equal to zero, and we have our moment at C, our internal moment turns out to be uh, positive 15 kilonewtons. Okay, so those are our three internal forces at point C. And I just want to show you that you can also do this by drawing the right hand side of the beam as well and come out with the same answers. So let's re-perform. You don't have to perform this using both sections, but I just want to show you that it does work out. So I'm going to draw the right hand side of the beam. Okay, so the right hand side of the beam. And um, for C here, that on the right hand side, we're not gonna include the six kilonewton force. So we just have on the right hand side, we have dy, which we found out was one. And then we have this nine kilonewton meter moment over here as well. So how do we draw the normal force at C on this side of the diagram? Well, it's a, it's always pointed outward. So that's our normal. Actually, when we use the right hand side of the beam, the shear force, the positive sign convention is upward. And the moment, the positive side in convention, is always bending towards the top. All right, so these are our positive sign conventions. And I think you can see if we take the sum of the forces in the x direction for this, this situation that NC is going to still be zero. Secondly, we'll take the sum of the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero. So we have VC pointed upward. And we have uh, dy also pointed upward. And that's it. So there we come out with vc is equal to negative one kilonewton. So it's the same answer that we were getting when we analyzed the left-hand side of, of the beam. But we just need to make sure that the sign conventions match up. So make be careful about your sign conventions. And then lastly, the sum of the moments around point c and set those equal to zero. So we'll do the moments around this point. So we have MC, and we'll still call counterclockwise positive here. MC is actually negative because it's now in the clockwise direction. So we have negative MC, all right? And uh, we have DY, which is acting six meters away. I believe that's six meters. Let's make sure, yep, six meters away. And that's going to be a counterclockwise moment. So that's going to be positive. So that's a force of one acting six meters away. And then we also have this nine kilonewton force, which is going to be positive. So that's nine and that's it. So we set that equal to zero and we solve for MC here. And that's gonna be six, that's 15. That's a positive 15 kilonewton meter. I guess I forgot the kilonewton meter on this. 15 kilonewton meter. So this is the same solution that we got up above. So you can choose which one is easier for you to solve. If you choose the left-hand side or the right-hand side, it all comes out the same.